Scholars of the United States. Uh, I'm really excited and thankful to the American Library Association for having us on today to talk about getting the most out of voter registration and voter engagement. Uh, I particularly want to thank the president of the American Library Association, Loida Garcia Fabo, who I know um, has has made a commitment to helping uh, helping you all have access to good voter engagement resources and tools that exist uh, nationally and in your communities already to help make this process even more streamlined. Uh, I know anecdotally from my work that libraries provide a critical entry point to the civic and voting process for uh, millions probably of Americans. And I know that my organization in particular works very closely with the library community across the country. And so we're thrilled to have this partnership and thrilled to share some best practices with you. So over the next half hour, I'm going to go through some basic lay of the land in terms of voter engagement, where we're at in terms of representation and voter registration and engagement, um, share some best practices and ideas for you if you're still thinking about figuring out a voter engagement plan for this year or want to uh, maybe add to some plans you already have and share with you some resources that might be helpful. And um, I'll also mention that we have a blog up on the American Libraries blog, uh, sort of outlining some of these same ideas. And that would be a great place to go for additional ideas and links to some of the things I'm going to talk about um, and so forth. So just a very brief introduction about the League of Women Voters. Uh, the League is active in more than 700 communities across all 50 states. So it's likely we have a chapter in your area. We were founded uh, 99 years ago out of, the, out of the women's suffrage movement and have been fixtures in many local communities ever since that time. Uh, most of you, if you're familiar with our organization, probably know the League as a group that's out registering voters hosting debates and forums, oftentimes at public libraries and community centers and so forth. Uh, we never endorse or oppose candidates or political parties, so our work is nonpartisan. Um, and we really focus this time of year, of course, on voter engagement uh, and empowerment. For example, we are a big part of the nationwide National Voter Registration Day effort that's coming up on September 25th. I know libraries also make up a major part of that day. So if you haven't yet signed up your library to participate, I encourage you to do so at nationalvoterregistrationday.org. We ourselves uh, have already had more than 400 of our own League of Women Voters affiliates sign up to host voter registration drives. Again, many may be doing that at your own facilities where you work. Uh, so encourage you to do that. If you do sign up for that day, you get free nonpartisan posters and stickers and help with getting the word out about voter registration in your state and, and so forth. Um, internally, our goal for this year at the league here is to serve at least 2 million voters online through our site, vote411.org, which I'll talk about in a little bit here. Um, many of us are doing voter registration and other kinds of voter engagement these days online, of course. And that's a key opportunity for you all as well um, as you're thinking about how to set up your voter engagement resources in your in, in your workplaces. So um, some of this is probably well known to you already, but why does voter registration matter? We know that registration is uh, the first major entry point for civic engagement in most places for people to become voters in most states they have to vote, uh, register to vote. Uh, and so as such, it can also be a barrier to many people, especially many of the communities that you're serving through your work. Um, red uh, registration is deadline driven in most states. Sometimes those deadlines can be as much as 30 days out from a, from a federal election. In some cases, it's more like a week out and, and many states thankfully even have uh, now same day voter registration where people can go and update their voter registration and vote uh, at the polls on election day or during an early voting period. Uh, that looks very different from place to place and I'll give you some ideas for where you can find out that information about how it works in your state uh, if you're not sure. But we do know that one in four eligible Americans roughly is unregistered. Uh, so that's, again, a, a big gap for us to help fill. The League fundamentally believes that when our electorate is more representative of, of our full communities, 
we'll have better public policy as a result. Um, and so a big part of our work is to help fill that gap, help really focus in on that one in four eligible Americans who remains unregistered, um, and then of course help keep them registered even as they move and, and, and go through life. Uh, millions of people tell us and tell the census and other places who gather this data that they don't vote or don't register because they've missed a deadline or they weren't aware that there was a deadline uh, or they had some other some other barrier in their way. Um, so again, important to be promoting these deadlines. They're fast approaching in many of our states and getting the word out that they're coming and helping empower people to, to update their registration record if they need to or get registered for the first time is a major thing we can do to help um, fulfill that goal of having a truly truly diverse and, and representative electorate. Uh, the disparities among registration, not surprisingly, are biggest among uh, young people who don't have college experience, people who have recently moved and need to update their registration record, um, lower income communities and, and certain communities of color. So this just shows you very quickly some census data. This is self-reported registration data that the census puts out after federal elections. You can see on the left here, uh, the youngest age brackets are the least likely to be registered and thus voting. And then um, in, on the right hand graph, you can see Asian Americans and uh, Hispanic Americans remain lowest in terms of registered and voting in elections. So those are some of the biggest gaps that exist. Of course, these numbers fluctuate from year to year. Um, we also know that basic information is critical, especially when we're engaging those least likely voters or uh, what we would call low propensity voters, especially people who maybe tend to vote in presidential elections, but don't tend to turn out in midterm years like this year and so forth. Uh, for example, here's uh, Circle out of Tufts University puts out incredible data, the gold standard of data in terms of young people voting and, and the barriers that exist to young people participating in all sorts of civic life. Um, this is a graph that they did a few years ago showing that um, about 80% of young people tell us they need some basic information in order to vote. So uh, many, many young folks especially are not sure if there's a voter voter ID law in their state, if they're gonna be asked to show ID, what that ID looks like, what counts as acceptable ID in their state. Um, more than 60% of young voters are not sure about their voter registration deadline, and more than 50% of people, young people, unsure about whether there's early voting in their state. So you can see all of these critical pieces of information um, do contribute to people staying home on election day or not getting that registration updated or filled out in time in order to participate. Uh, we know another piece of information that Circle has looked at is that basic information about who's gonna be on the ballot is also critical, especially for young people and these lower propensity voting groups to know. We know that young people have told us that if they don't know who's on the ballot, uh, especially in a midterm year like this one, where there's not presidential level type of coverage maybe of local and statewide elections, um, if they're not sure who's on the ballot, they're more likely to stay home out of a sort of confidence gap, what we would call a, you know, a lack of uh, understanding who they're voting for and what those local and state positions really do. And so that's a big barrier that we try to overcome uh, here at the league by providing nonpartisan voter guides, uh, candidate information, trying to help people have easy access to understand who's on their ballot, what those people stand for, and, and why their roles are important. So of course, you know, uh, and that's why you're on this webinar, that libraries offer a key opportunity to help us overcome some of these challenges and engage new voters using resources that already exist. Um, a few things to consider. I'm sure some of you have many, many more incredible programs you're running. Uh, certainly you can ask a local League of Women Voters or other civic you know, group in your community to set up a voter registration drive at your, at your uh, place of work, at your facility. Uh, and you know, many, many, I know many of our leagues already do this with, with the library communities uh, where, they, where they are and um, there's still time to, to ask. Uh, you can set up your own voter registration drive using staff or volunteer time. Um, you can simply put out informational materials, whether it's paper. I know many libraries put out uh, copies of our voter guide for people. 
Um, more and more of that information, as I said, is going online. So that may be something that you can put in prominent kiosk locations uh, in your libraries and so forth. Um, and certainly, perhaps even regardless of what, uh, what you're doing, incorporate this basic information into your social media, into your public events, into whatever outreach you're doing into the community, um, into your into your story time. Make sure you're mentioning to parents who are coming uh, or, or the daycare providers who are coming to those events, the people who are attending uh, whatever public programming you're putting on, that this information is there, that you have it, that you're available to help assist them in whatever way possible. Um, and you know, voter engagement takes all shapes and sizes, but one key that runs through all of it is promoting it to the public, uh, letting folks know what we have available uh, every opportunity we get. Uh, in terms of when to register, again, whether it's simply putting up prominently placed materials or having an actual event of some sort uh, or bringing in a partner group like the League to do it, certainly September is the key time, so we're right in it. Um, just before the deadlines, that's when most people think about voting in elections is right as it's coming up. So uh, thinking about when your state has its voter registration deadline and, and sort of tracking from there. Uh, thinking about, of course, when you have the most people coming through uh, through your through your libraries, um, focusing on movers. Many movers don't know that they need to likely update their registration record if they've moved or if they're new to your state. Um, so this may even be something that you incorporate into the uh, process of getting a new library card, just as a, a example off the top of my head, uh, or signing up for some other sort of uh, programming that you have that focuses on people who are new to your community. Uh, and then National Voter Registration Day, as I mentioned, is coming up uh, on September 25th, and there's still plenty of time to sign up as a partner for that and benefit from all of the resources that they have. Um, now, in terms of the very quick uh, overview of what's best and most important when it comes to voter registration. Here is the real boiled down version. Um, of course, aim to reach the most people. Um, think about ahead of time how much time and effort you can really give to this. I know you're very busy and uh, voting and civic education engagement is not um, the primary job responsibility for, for probably the vast majority of you, but there are groups in your community for who it is uh, our, our core kind of activity set. And so I can't stress enough that there are probably many groups in your community, or at least a few, already doing this work and who would love to work with you. So um, they're probably going to be helpful in knowing any rules about voter registration drives. Uh, some states do have requirements that anyone who's registering voters and collecting completed applications, for example, uh, be trained or have gone through some simple certification process. Um, some states have rules about how many days you have to submit completed voter registration applications and things like that. If you're working with a group like the League, um, you can you know, trust that they're going to know those rules and be able to carry out the registration drive kind of with full acknowledgement of any rules they need to be aware of in their state uh, so that you don't have to necessarily you know, worry about complying with them. Of course, keep it nonpartisan and again, work you know, we would encourage you to work with groups who are who are known for being nonpartisan in your community. Um, know the eligibility rules for voters in your state. So uh, if you're doing a registration drive or even just putting up a large uh, poster or, you know, um, or bulletin board kind of thing about voting engagement, the eligibility rules are a clear question. So things about age, do people need to be um, 18 in order to register, or is it okay if they'll be 18 by election day uh, for first-time voters? Um, information about if if folks are formally incarcerated, uh, is there a special process that they would need to go through to get their voting rights reinstated? Again, your local uh, elections official or League of Women Voters or um, NAACP or some other uh, some other citizen community group can be very helpful to you in probably already having that information available. Um, and then also, it can, we have seen a large uptick in the number of folks we see registered if they know ahead of time what they need. So if your voter registration form, if you have uh, a voter registration drive planned and the 
the voter registration form in your state requires, let's say, the last four digits of a social security number or a driver's license number or something like that in order for folks to register. Uh, it's important to publicize that ahead of time. So if you're doing some social media promotion around the fact that you and other groups will be on hand to offer voter registration, let's say. Um, if you mention those things, you're likely to have people bringing the, bringing the information or document they need in order to complete the registration process and successfully complete it when, they, when they've come to you for that help. So uh, that's a, a good other thing to sort of promote ahead of time if you want to actually be helping or if you're going to be making voter registration available online uh, on your equipment at your library. Um, important to post that ahead of time and say, if you don't have this information, like a driver's license number, perhaps there's a backup paper form that you can use instead. That's how, in most cases, our folks uh, get around that barrier that exists for voters. So again, uh, checking with your local groups who are doing this uh, and asking them how they would recommend doing it can really help you get more successfully uh, people registered. Um, so I've mentioned your local board of elections can be a real key key source of this. I expect many of you may even already have relationships there. Your local League of Women Voters, uh, as I said, and then also uh, one of our partners, the Fair Elections Legal Network here, uh, based here in Washington, D.C., puts out wonderful guides for groups who are considering their own voter registration drives. So if you are considering something larger scale, they are a great resource to check out. They have guides for running voter registration drives in every single state. Um, as you're working with elections officials, here's just a few tips to keep in mind. Let them know what you're planning to do. Again, ask for their help. Do they have uh, easily understandable guides to the voter voting process? Do they have a sample ballot you can put up or will they as we get closer to the election? Um, do they have any trainings you and your staff can attend? Um, are there new changes to how voting works that, that maybe you're not aware of uh, since the last election? Do they have materials? Maybe they have materials available in alternative languages, et cetera. Um, those can all be really important questions uh, to ask as you're working with them. If you're actually hosting a voter registration drive and you're in charge of voter registration forms and so, and so forth, it's a good idea to give elections officials a heads up that you're going to be having this event and be turning in forms. And then as you're turning them in, uh, following any other rules that exist for your state, certainly it's a good idea to pull out any app voter registration applications you've collected uh, that maybe they, they're missing some information, maybe the voter didn't sign it or missed the, the box where they put their birth date, you know, common kinds of mistakes or omissions that can happen. Uh, it's a good idea to pull that application out, out to the top of the pile and say, hey, um, you know, we, we saw this voter miss that information. Is there anything we can do to help uh, get in touch with that voter, make sure that they get onto the rolls and are able to successfully participate in the election? Um, again, if you're doing a large scale uh, voter registration drive with your staff or another group or volunteers, here are a few things to think through. We always recommend a quick team training or gathering before you go out and start a voter registration drive just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, the most common questions are going to be about the registration form itself. So um, what are the fields that are required? What does this field mean exactly? Um, if someone doesn't have a fixed address, how does that work uh, in your state? There may be specific instructions to keep in mind for that. Um, <clears throat> so walking through the form, Practicing the pitch, and this is relevant whether you're doing an in-person event or just figuring out what to put um, in your newsletter or uh, on your community board. So we know that the research tells us that being positive and enthusiastic about voting, asking people to join their neighbors in becoming a voter is uh, by far the, the best way to go. Um, it's the most sort of motivating and empowering messages that work best in engaging new voters. Uh, connecting it to the issues that matter. So making sure that um, if there's a major ballot initiative uh, that's going to be on the ballot in your state or local community, that that's something you're talking about and providing hopefully some nonpartisan information about from local groups who are working on it or getting the word out about it. 
Um, if you're actually going to be out there, you and your staff talking to patrons about voting, it's great to practice uh, and talk through the common questions you've gotten before if you've done this or that you think voters might ask. Again, a lot of it's going to be around the mechanics of voting. Uh, so filling out the form, how does absentee or early voting work in your community, in your state? Um, who's on the ballot this year? What, what does that mean, et cetera? Those are the things that we hear most often. Uh, again, I've mentioned these already, but if you are, if you are com uh, com uh, gathering voter registration applications uh, and turning them in for voters, make sure you have a really clear custody process for those forms and follow it. Um, of course, always keep it nonpartisan. And uh, again, you don't have to do this uh, all on your own. There are lots of groups, including the League of Women Voters, who you can work with and turn to to help handle a lot of these pieces and who are very comfortable and familiar doing so. Um, making it friendly to tell folks about. So again, I've mentioned this already. Hopefully, this is something you're promoting beyond just um, just in person at your facility, uh, especially if you have a good good following in the community. Um, hopefully the local media might even be interested if you're doing something sort of noteworthy around voter engagement this year. So um, keeping it brief and simple, you know, we're thrilled we registered, you know, 38 people, or maybe it's 380 people <laughs> if you had a really successful event. Um, keeping it simple and brief, uh, allowing some photo opportunities if you're having a fun or exciting event, um, and then using any public promotion about your work as an opportunity to get the word out further to other people. So we want everyone in Wisconsin to know that uh, this is the important information on our ballot this year. This is the voter registration deadline. Here's where you can go to make sure you're registered and successful. Those are the kinds of messages that can really be helpful to people beyond just those who are walking through the doors of your library. Um, to kind of just wrap up here and show you some key resources, I've mentioned vote411.org. That's the league's national website that has uh, voter information for all 50 states, an online voter registration tool for all 50 states. It works a little bit differently from place to place, depending on how voter registration works in your state. Um, uh, but most of it is now completely online for, for most states, uh, although people do need to have certain documentation in many states to register completely online. So it looks a little different from place to place. Uh, we also have candidate information about who's on the ballot for thousands and thousands of race, races nationwide. Um, on our local organizational, our, our national organizational site, lwv.org, you'll be able to find your local league if you don't already have that connection. Uh, and reach out to them for uh, potential help with your in-person voter registration events. Uh, you can, of course, look at our website. We have blogs and ideas around voter engagement. And then, as I mentioned, uh, nationalvoterregistrationday.org. So uh, with that, I also, um, I'm putting up my information here. Uh, you're more than welcome to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to get more information. Um, and we just truly, Truly appreciate your interest and wish you all the best of luck. You can also check out the blog post uh, posted at American Libraries. And I thank you very much for your time. Good luck out there. Bye-bye.